Hello my dear jewelry lovers, today, I will tell you one very interesting and memorable story about the Queen Victoria's lavish wedding, and exquisite royal diamonds. One of the most loved and revered rulers occupied the throne for over 60 years. At just 18, the young Princess Victoria had to take her place on the throne. At the age of 20, she married her own cousin, whom she loved with all her soul. Victoria and Albert really loved each other and created an exemplary royal family. Such English people did not expect such a family from their monarchs. No scandals, no treason. And yet we are more interested not in the character and family life of the British Queen and the unique jewellery she wore on her wedding day. On the 10th of February 1840, the eyes of Britain were fixed on St. James's Palace where the young Queen Victoria arrived in a grand royal procession for her wedding to Prince Albert of saxe goburg gotha No one was even confused by the fact that the bride and groom were quite close relatives of each other. Victoria's mother, the Duchess of Kent, was the sister of Albert's father, the Duke of saxe goburg gotha As crown monarch, Victoria promised to love, honour and obey her husband. The small chapel was filled with royal relatives, government officials and foreign dignitaries. Among those present were Queen Adelaide, widow of King William IV, aunts and uncles on the bride's side. The bride's bridal train was carried by 12 aristocratic bridesmaids. The unique dress was made by Mrs. Mary Bettens, Victoria's dressmaker, who had an establishment on German Street in London. This outfit was made using white satin, lace ornamented to resemble orange blossoms. It is hard to believe, but 200 masters worked on the creation of this luxury from March to November, and the use of lace for the Queen's wedding dress brought back the interest of fashionistas in British lace, which was produced in Heaton. In those years, lace from Brussels was considered more fashionable, but since the Queen herself chose British material, aristocrats began to follow her example. To ensure that the lace fabric for Queen Victoria's outfit remained unique, the manufacturers were obliged to destroy all samples and designs after the work was completed. The veil alone took over six weeks to complete. I think you can see this luxurious veil in a photograph taken. In 1890, for Victoria's personal collection, a shot of Queen Victoria's wedding veil of Honiton lace and orange blossom wreath, which she wore at her wedding, taken by an unknown photographer around 1889 to 91 on this day. Many noble ladies shone in gorgeous tiaras and other hair jewellery. Victoria, on the other hand, chose not to wear a tiara for the ceremony. The veil was secured with a wreath of fresh orange blossoms. The dress was also pinned with orange blossoms. She set the fashion and soon many ladies were choosing orange blossom patterns. It seems to me that the Queen was partial to these flowers. Just a year before her wedding, Victoria's future husband presented her with a brooch in the form of an orange blossom as an engagement gift. Over the years, he added many pieces of orange blossom jewellery to her orange collection. In December 1845, he gave her a brooch and a pair of earrings, and in February 1846, he presented her with a tiara as a wedding anniversary gift. It also had flowers on it, four flowers representing the couple's four eldest children. Each year, Victoria would wear orange blossom jewellery for their wedding anniversary. Sadly, photography was still rare at the time of the wedding when Victoria and Albert married in 1840. However, there are many pictures of the wedding ceremony and these can be viewed in great detail. Each of these pictures is slightly different, for example, in the stylized illustration above, the orange blossoms have been replaced by a laurel wreath, but it shows the two pieces of diamond jewellery that the Queen wore to the ceremony. The necklace and earrings were a gift from the Sultan of Turkey, presented to the princess on the day of her coronation. Both pieces of the set were made by the jewellery house of Rundle, and bridge and set with diamond rosettes. Seven years after the occasion, Queen Victoria commissioned a portrait of herself in her wedding attire. As a wedding anniversary gift for Prince Albert, the picture was painted by her favourite artist, Franz Xaver Winterhalter. The portrait was completed in 1847. It was placed in the Prince's private apartments at Windsor Castle. 
Interestingly, the portrait shows a piece of jewellery that is not in the other paintings from the wedding, a diamond and sapphire brooch that Albert had given her the night before. In George Hayter's painting, instead of a brooch, there is an orange blossom attached to the Queen's corset. There is no mention of the brooch in the newspapers that describe the wedding day. There is, however, a mention of the gift in Queen Victoria's diaries. Queen Victoria was an extremely sentimental person, and this portrait was not the only one that repeated the wedding image. For example, Charles Robert Leslie's painting of the christening of her eldest daughter, Victoria Adelaide Maria Louisa, of Great Britain shows the Queen wearing King George IV's diamond tiara with Turkish diamonds and Prince Albert's brooch. Seventeen years later, when the Princess Victoria of Great Britain married Prince Frederick William of Prussia, Queen Victoria also wore several details from her wedding dress. In John Philip's wedding painting, the British Queen is also wearing a Turkish diamond necklace with other jewellery including a diamond tiara and co in a brooch. The fate of Victoria's wedding dress and jewellery is interesting. Some of it has survived, but there are some that have been lost. The wedding dress is on display at Kensington Palace. There you can also see a wreath of orange blossoms, which was given to her by Albert, resembling the original one. Queen Victoria's wedding dress has undergone serious conservation and is on display. At Kensington Palace her wedding ring and wedding veil were buried with the Queen. Prince Albert's brooch remains part of the royal jewellery collection and is passed from monarch to monarch. This brooch was often worn by Elizabeth II. Victoria gave the Turkish diamonds to her seventh child, the Duke of Kent and Strathern. His wife Louise wore the necklace to numerous important events. Much to her dismay, the set was sold in London in 1970. The fate of the earrings from the Turkish set is not known. According to one account, Victoria gave them to her daughter-in-law, Queen Alexandra, who often wore them as pendants on her necklaces. Alexandra's diamond pendants are now owned by the Norwegian royal family. Queen Sonia wears them as earrings. I think these earrings are very reminiscent of those worn by Queen Victoria. But whether they are this one or not is another story. Would you like a lavish wedding like this? Write in the comments. Thank you very much for watching. I am happy to try for you. Please put please like. Subscribe to the channel write comments. It gives me the motivation to continue to please you. Also what would you like to see a video about? Write in the comments.